Well, hello, friends, and welcome back. So today in the shop, we've got our replacement Midas M32R console, um, which if you remember from a previous video, uh, this console was the offending console that had what I thought was a bad AES-50 card in it. So um, the fine, fine friends at Sweetwater sent me another console post-haste. They red-labeled this thing to me. Um, and unfortunately, I just haven't had a chance to, uh, to crack, the, uh, crack the box open. So today I'm getting my uh, return ready and just doing some invest investigative reporting here. So uh, interestingly enough, I also got my uh, Sound Tools cat reel uh, today. So this is something that I actually ordered before the tour uh, that didn't get here in time. So it, it finally got here today. Um, and interestingly enough, with the brand new console here, I am having some connectivity issues over AES. So <laughs> um, I'm just trying to continue to troubleshoot this. Um, I'm trying to uh, sort of deduce whether two things can be true at once. Um, the, uh, the AES card may be bad in the uh, original console, um, but it also may just be unhappy um, with, uh, with some cable length issues. At least that's what my hypothesis is right now. So um, I'm working under two impressions here. Um, one is that the, um, it doesn't like something in this connector. Um, so I uh, just have my little Klein cable tester here, uh, which I have a little bag in my shop that I always carry with me. And one of the things that I did buy um, was uh, a crimp tool, a cable tester, and a little pair of snips that I've been carrying with me in my work box from now on. Um, because in this modern age that we live in, uh, I feel like uh, drums of cat line are, are probably the inevitable uh, present <laughs> of where we're at in audio. So uh, knowing how to take those things apart and deal with them is uh, a fact of daily life on tour. So I just made myself a little bag. So uh, one of the first things that I noticed on this particular cable here is uh, the cables are kind of in an interesting order um, looking, uh, looking at this connector. Now, I don't know what this is. Um, somebody commented on a previous video that this is a high-rose connector, uh, these, these yellow ones like this. Um, it does have a Neutrik cable carrier. This is a Neutrik brand cable carrier. Um, but if you remember from a, a previous video that I shot, uh, when you're dealing with, with EtherCon, um, Neutrik has two different flavors of connector. Uh, they have these, which are just basically a cable carrier, um, so it just brings the RJ45 into uh, a Neutrik world, and then they have another version that um, is, is physically a, a punch down um, within the connector. Um, so when you're building cables like this, you crimp the RJ on the end of it, and then um, you, uh, you, you just insert it into this cable carrier. And I made a video on the difference of those, so just check the upper right-hand corner of your screen and check that out. So um, at, at first blush, here, let me bring you to the back of the DL32. Stand by. Well, lighting's not super great back there, so let's stay back here. Um, so if you notice, when we plug our uh, sound tools cable in, it just slides in. It's not engaging the, uh, the lock right here which could be a problem. Um, so when we bring our uh, heavy-duty LM Tor Systems cable in here, we do get a positive click. Um, now, again, the difference between these two connectors here, um, this, this one on the left here is one that I made. Uh, I can't remember what this part number is, so in post-editing, it will be appearing on the, uh, on the screen. And then this one is just the cable carrier. Um, one of the things that I did notice, so with the LM-built cable that I made, it's, it's fine. Um, uh, the, the connectivity between the uh, console and the stage box is not a problem. Um, with the, uh, the sound tools one, though, I'm wondering if it's not getting a positive enough lock, and that's, uh, and that's the problem. Um, I did take the, I know what you're thinking, I did take the barrels off and just put the cable in there, and it's still not getting connection. Um, so, which leads me to believe one of two things at this point in the video. Um, either it's a length problem, because this is a 300 foot, um, this is a 300 foot loom, or, uh, it's, it's the connector. Now on tour, uh, I came, 
across three different versions of this trying to troubleshoot it. One was the uh, the cable from Claire that had this end on it um, that was unshielded because Avid doesn't require a, um, a shielded connection between their stage box and their console. Um, the other one was, I, I didn't get a chance to really look that far. It was shielded, but I, I couldn't, I know that it wasn't uh, this connector, the heavy duty one. So I'm guessing that they were both this this cable carrier um, version. Uh, so what I'm going to do is because I own this sound tools reel now, and um, I, I should also say that um, I've used the I have 25 foot sound tools cables, and they they sync the stage box just fine. So I think just for the sake of comparison, I'm going to pop this cable connector off and uh, put the heavy duty connectors on and see if we can uh, we can get sync then. So uh, stand by. All right, so before I start modifying this thing, uh, I figured I would show you guys the uh, the Sound Tools cable reel. Um, so this thing, uh, or I should say before I, I do this, God, I'm so sorry. This desk is so, so filthy. <laughs> I really need to take a minute and uh, and clean this. So just, you know, <laughs> know that uh, it's, it's working first, YouTube videos second. I'm, uh, not shooting in a specific studio. This is my shop that I build stuff in. And the last couple of weeks have just been extremely hectic. Um, so here's the real, uh, this thing is cool. Um, it's, it's very inexpensive. I think I paid like 600 bucks for this thing. Um, it has a little locking tab right here. Um, so if you look, there's a little, a little threaded screw portion here that, that locks the reel from sliding. Cool, great. And then on the side here, there's a little door that just opens up and they give you, uh, this is the, the cable of the, uh, or the end of the reel here. So this is what would plug in either into your stage box or your console at, at front of house. So, you know, um, we, uh, we use Hene reels at LM. Um, they're, uh, the reel, if we were going to do this as a Hene reel with me loading the cable on here and actually building something for myself, um, the reel would be 700 bucks. The, uh, and, and there was, I think I quoted this out with just using our Belden cable that we use here, our data tough cable. And I think it was another like $1,500 in cable or something like that. Um, again, I'm, I'm pulling that number off the top of my head, but anyway, uh, it was cheaper even as me as a cable builder, uh, to to buy the uh, the sound tool stuff, and the other thing that that Dave does with sound tools that I really like is um, he's got this neoprene coated cable, so it wraps like mic line, um, which is really really nice. The uh, the data tough cable that we use is really unwieldy. It's it's really tricky to wrap. Um, it's super heavy duty, really indestructible. It's a tactical military grade cable, but it is, uh, very, very tricky to, uh, to wrap that stuff. This is, this is great. Um, and, and the other thing that I should mention also is, um, I'm, I'm certainly not knocking sound tools. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this cable. Um, I have other 25 foot sound tools cables that, that mate just fine, um, and uh, like I said, I, I, I love all of Dave's stuff. It's really cool. I think he's an awesome guy. Um, I think the, the problem here is, is just an inherent um, issue with this type of connector. Um, so I, I've made a bunch of EtherCon videos before. Uh, definitely check those out. But uh, if you look here, um, the RJ45 is not quite centered. And I'm trying to show this so that it comes across on camera. Um, it's, it's sort of angled in here. So, you know, just running this through cable tester, all the pins match one-to-one. -one. Um, the other thing is I, I just don't think that it's mating correctly, and that, that could be the problem. Um, when I was on the road, the cables that we got, um, I had uh, two that were in EtherCon barrels like this, and then I had another one that I used for troubleshooting that was just a regular RJ45. Um, and it was still giving me issues. So uh, I'm going to swap this guy out um, and put the upgraded connectors on here. Um, and we'll see if that solves the problem. And if it doesn't, um, it, I think we might just be uh, dealing with a length issue here. So I'm going to pop those connectors on and I will report back. Sorry, me again. Um, <laughs> so I, I figured I would also show you if you didn't want to check out the other videos, how these work. Um, so you just take this cable carrier off. And then if you see here, this is just um, just the cable carrier. There's no tech in there. This is just a piece of metal. Um, 
and then this holds the uh, the RJ in here like this. So, you know, if you do get an EtherCon on the road and it doesn't work for some reason and you have to take it off just to expose the RJ, um, it, it looks uh, just like this. So um, this is the connector. You know, you take the shield, which is this portion right here, and you basically just loop it around the, uh, the strain relief right here. So anyway, I'm going to uh, pop this Neutra connector on or the other one on, and uh, we'll, we'll see you in a sec. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Here's our upgraded uh, EtherCon connector here. So let's see. Ooh, it's a good sign. Nice positive click. Let's see if we have sync. Sorta. Hmm. Okay. Back to the drawing board. All right. So I have a, about 110 feet of shop cable here that are all joined with various female to female connectors to make this work. And we are connecting just fine with a with cables that probably have three or four splices in them and everything is stable. So I have to believe that the cat cable from, from rat is just a little bit too long. So, um, I called two friends of mine. And again, I think this would be a very good collaborative, uh, YouTube comment section debate. Um, one of my friends is a touring sound engineer and currently works for, um, a production company. So I asked him, I said, how long of ethernet lines do you guys spec between front of house and stage? And he said, they generally don't go longer than 200 feet. So there's that. And then the other friend said, rat makes snakes notoriously a little bit long. So I think what I'm going to do is just hack 25 feet off of this snake and see what happens. So stand by. Well, would you look at that? AES sync. There we go. We have cracked the code. So all I did was knock 25 feet off of the sound tools snake and life is good. I mean, it also has upgraded cat connectors on there. So there's that. So y'all, this was a interesting learning experience for me. Um, I'm certainly used to being Mr. White Glove fly date guy and going in and mixing shows. The whole A, owning a console and B, dealing with this kind of stuff is certainly a learning experience. It also shows me how absolutely spoiled I am. So anyway, if you guys are having problems with this, I swapped the connectors out to make sure that there was a positive lock and um, uh, we just reduced the length. So I hope this helps you if you're, uh, if you're in the same problem. So anyway, thanks for, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See ya. Bye.